As we previously reported, according to the latest data from the China National Bureau of Statistics, the urban youth unemployment rate exceeded 20% for the first time in April 2023. It's the highest record since statistics became available in January 2018. The number of college graduates in China in 2023 will be 11.58 million, an increase of 820,000 year on year. Essentially, it's created a situation where graduation means unemployment. With the economic downturn and geopolitical crisis intensifying, 17% of Chinese companies have started laying off employees, and 43% of the companies surveyed plan to lay off employees or stop hiring in the coming year, leaving less jobs for young people. What should they do in such a situation? Young Chinese people have come up with various new tricks to make a living. Move number one is to return home and become a full-time child or nanny to one's parents. Full-time children is a new way of living. Away from production, young people live with their parents and contribute a certain amount of labor in exchange for financial support. At the same time, they'll keep up with their studies and try to reach their career goals. Eventually, they aim to gain their independence by passing exams for public servants or graduate schools. Among the 29 million college graduates from the past three years, a large percentage still haven't found jobs. Adding this year's graduates, there would be about 40 million young people. How many of them have been out of school and tasted the bitter experience of being unemployed? Some college graduates who are frustrated with their job search have decided to give it up and return home to be their parents' dutiful sons and daughters. They claim that there is a difference between a full-time son or daughter and someone who lives off their parents. Living off one's parents is to stay idle and depend on them, but full-time children treat their parents as their clients and bosses. They mainly focus on tasks such as driving their father to work, helping their mother with shopping, and taking the initiative to do household chores such as laundry, cooking, walking the dog, just like a young live-in nanny. In the process of exchanging household chores for financial support, they are committed to continuing their studies in order to one day enter the civil service, graduate school, or finally find a job of their choice. Isn't it a bit odd that children in their 20s are taking care of their families as nannies while parents in their 50s are delaying retirement and working to earn money? It's a complete reversal of family roles of previous times. The 40 million college graduates from 2020 to 2023 have all experienced the epidemic while living on the campus. Finally, they managed to finish their schooling despite great challenges. Then they unfortunately encountered a decline in the job market. In the job fair of Henan University of Finance and Political Science, a hotel came to the school looking for dishwashers. The lowest monthly salary was 2,000 yuan, or US $280. In Shanghai, the richest city in China, the salary for college graduates used to be around 10,000 to 20,000 yuan. Now it falls to 5,500 yuan, or 700 US dollars. In China, the status of a college student, which used to be prestigious, has dropped dramatically. Gone are the days when college entrance exams were capable of changing one's fate and poor families could produce well-to-do and high-class children. So full-time sons and daughters are actually the last resort. Since restaurants don't need people to wash dishes, children would have to go home and wash dishes for their parents. It's the last haven for young people in China. Out of 100 school-age students in China, 49.5 can take the college entrance exam, 16.3 can get into undergraduate programs, 2.4 can get into the 211 universities or the top 115 ranked universities in China. 0.79 people can get into 985 universities or the best 39 universities in China. They are all pushing over the single log bridge of the college entrance exam, paying the price of hard work and high tuition, hoping to change their fate with knowledge. Recently, a group of online images show that when being asked if it's stressful to take the college entrance exam, a high school student in Turpan Xinjiang replied, No, not at all. I'll sell hammy melons four years later if I pass the exam. I'll sell hammy melons immediately if I don't. 
A father who works as a delivery rider has worked 20 years to support his son to finish his college education. 20 years later, the son is working alongside his father as a delivery worker. Can knowledge really change one's fate? As a representative of China's National People's Congress, the chairman of Gree Electric Appliances, a well-known enterprise in China, participated in the two sessions in March 2023 and said, "Now is an era of big data, and the intelligence era may reduce heavy labor. After graduation, if college students go to the assembly line to make screws, what's wrong with that?" It immediately sparked heated discussions among young Chinese. One person responded. If I knew that I had to work in a factory after graduating from college, what's the point of going to college? It would be better to go straight to work after junior high. That way, I can make extra seven years of wages and save seven years of high tuition and living expenses. A junior high education is sufficient to take on work such as making screws. As long as one understands mixed arithmetic operations, knows his numbers and twenty-six alphabets, with all the limbs and being able to lift and carry, and being neither deaf nor blind, it would be sufficient for anyone. The problem is, for a job like ringing screws, the salary is really low given the current economic depression. It's rather questionable if it's enough to support oneself. I repeat, it's nine yuan an hour, or US a dollar thirty an hour. If you want more than nine yuan, go talk to the boss yourself. As long as young people are willing to work hard, I can live the life I want. Let me show you the salary slip of the so-called conscientious and reasonable labor now. This is a payroll slip of our peers in Guangdong, a college student. Okay. The wage was five yuan an hour, or seventy U.S. cents an hour. It took only seventy U.S. cents for one to start in a factory. The factory paid the agency a salary of nineteen yuan, that is two point seven U.S. dollars an hour. The attendance contract was signed for eighty-six days, that is, working eighty-six days over three months. The actual attendance was sixty-one days. This young man worked sixty-one days on the job and had to leave. You can say he isn't the most hardworking person. Sixty-one days or six hundred and forty point five hours of work is considered the average level of working hard. Naturally, there is no overtime pay, so the total basic salary on the books was three thousand two hundred and two yuan, but it was impossible to get it. Although there was free room and board, no deductions made for agency fees, which means this boss was actually conscientious. Still, 180 yuan was deducted for not completing the workload. The insurance deduction was 150 yuan, so a total of 330 yuan was deducted. The actual salary paid was 2,872.5 yuan. That is, one made 404 U.S. dollars after two months of work. Some people believe that full-time children is a way for young people to glorify living off their parents in the name of looking after aging parents. Its essence is still living off their parents. However, not everyone agrees with this view. For example, this lady thinks differently. Some people may argue that this is a new form of being unfilial. You make it sound innocent and innovative. If you put it that way, full-time children won't agree. Look, if one works 996 schedule all year round, that is from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week, how often can one see one's parents? On the surface, one seems to be working hard, but when one reaches the age of 30, one still can't afford to date a girl or buy a home. One still has to ask for help from the parents. That is to say, after all the struggles, one still ends up eyeing the six wallets of one parents and grandparents from both sides. Do you see the situation now? There is an evolution of college graduates in metropolitan areas. Going back for jobs at one's hometown isn't easy either. Ten graduates from 985 universities, that is China's elite universities, competed for one position in a county government. The policy shock, international turmoil, unemployment upon graduation, getting laid off before reaching middle age. Internal and external challenges of our times. It's not a simple case of one's having high expectations yet not being able to bear hardships. So the current situation is: even if you have managed to find a job, 
with a monthly salary of 3,000 yuan, you won't be able to afford the utilities and rent. Since one can't get the job despite fighting through the crowd, and even if one gets the job, one doesn't make enough, the salary one makes after working the 996 schedule isn't enough to pay a nanny for one's parents. So one might as well go home and be the nanny. First, it's not worth it to make a few thousand yuan at the price of sacrificing one's health. Second, parents are getting older, and it's more beneficial to stay at home to look after them while being compensated. It saves the middleman from making a profit. Once one figures this out, it means the generation of full-time children have understood that it's better to go home instead of joining the rat race and the fierce competition. But don't just look at the cheerful surface of these full-time children. They are also very anxious inside because of the judgment from the neighbors, the society, the guilt and the helplessness of not being financially independent, plus all the conflicts between the two generations. And even more importantly, they can still play the role of full-time children, but what about their own children? What can they do? Wake up. If this continues, how can we have children? Not only are young people working as full-time children, but many middle-aged adults have also stepped into the ranks of full-time children. The Chinese media reported that a 40-year-old middle-aged man working in Shanghai was making U.S. 2800 a month. When his mother became ill and he quit his job to take care of her, he received 772 a month from his parents' retirement pay of around U.S. 1500 he looked for a job while taking care of his mother at home, but after two years at home, he became obsolete in his field of study and had a hard time finding a professional job. Now he has become a full-time son in the employment market. In other words, among the group of full-time sons and daughters, there is no lack of highly educated and capable people, most of whom chose to act as full-time sons and daughters when they encountered corporate closure and layoffs and lost their jobs or could not stand the cruel involution. One netizen said bluntly, If one can find a decent job to earn a decent salary, who would wish to lie flat at home? It's really a helpless choice under the surge of unemployment. Move number two is to visit a temple and pray to Buddha and the Divine. In the past two years, worshipping Buddha has become a trend among young people in China. Faced with the predicament of unemployment upon graduation and the pressure of not being able to find a job for a long time, desperate young people are going to temples to seek hope. According to Trip.com, so far in 2023, the number of temple visits has increased by 310% compared to last year, and about half of the visitors are young people born in the 1990s and 2000s. Early in the morning, the 300-year-old Yonghe Temple in Beijing has already welcomed a group of young pilgrims. They stood in front of the Buddha statue, hands together, twirling incense reverently and praying to the statue to find a job. If you can't find a job, you will want to come here to pay your respects and pray for a better job. It's very stressful. Because the pressure is too much, I come out to all sorts of relief and then stroll around the temple. The threshold of academic study is constantly rising. More people have high qualifications, and then there are a lot of students. They put more faith in the civil service and graduate school examinations, and then it gets harder and harder to find a job. Some analysts say that this phenomenon not only indicates the employment crisis, but also proves the failure of the Chinese Communist Party's brainwashing of atheism over the years. People originally thought that after such a long period of brainwashing and atheistic education by the CCP, young people's faith and belief in divinity and Buddhism and their reverence for the higher realms might be weaker. But I think this just shows that people's heartfelt insistence on righteousness and goodwill toward the divine hasn't been completely wiped out, even under the CCP suppression. This year, a record 11.58 million college graduates in China are seeking employment, 800,000 more than 2022. According to the China Statistics Bureau, one in five young Chinese between the ages of 16 and 24 is unemployed. The actual situation is much worse than that.
Reuters notes that China's private sector accounts for more than 60% of the economy's output and 80% of urban employment, but it has been hit hard by the zero COVID lockdowns in the last three years. Move number three is to operate innovative street stalls such as knowledge stalls and girlfriend stalls. A master's degree student said he didn't find a job after six months of unemployment, and over 98% of the resumes he submitted were lost in the sea. He felt little hope for the future. In the face of the current unemployment predicament of China's urban youth, some highly educated students, including college graduates and postgraduates, have started to explore the road of knowledge stalls. They sell their skills and knowledge, including psychological counseling, on the streets for a fee through chatting. They help others while healing themselves at the same time. A graduate from the philosophy department of Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, who goes by the name Tropical Fish, set up a knowledge stall in the tourist city of Dali, Yunnan Province. During Golden Week in early May, she sold philosophical counseling healing via chatting. Her first customer was a 40-year-old man from Xinjiang. His question was, "What is the meaning of life?" After nearly an hour of conversation, Tropical Fish charged 66 yuan, or US nine dollars and thirty cents. She has since added new products to her stall, including original postcards. She said her income was unstable, sometimes less than US fourteen dollars a day, and when she was lucky, she could receive US eighty-five dollars a day. On the fifth day of her business, Tropical Fish became a hit on the web, and visitors came in droves. Similar to her, a graduate of applied psychology who goes by the name of Awkward Wood also set up a psychological counseling stall in Dali City. The words "psychology, healing via chatting, and solve problems" were written on the paper board of his stall. In other cities, there are also those who have failed in their examinations and chosen to set up knowledge stalls in the streets. In addition to knowledge stalls, there are also girlfriend stalls. This is the recent appearance of a girlfriend stall in the streets of Shenzhen. The service items are clearly marked with prices, and this phenomena has aroused much discussion and concern. <laughs> Young women in the street stalls have clearly marked their prices. The picture shows girlfriend stall seventy U.S. cents a hug, a dollar forty a kiss. Two eighty for half an hour housework, chat, holding hands, and shopping are a dollar forty an hour. Other items include playing video games, watching movies, and dining, etc. In the past, China has always emphasized the city's appearance. The division that manages the city is called the Chengguang or Bylaw Officers. Wherever they go, they cause a lot of grief and public anger. Now the Chinese government is opening up the streets for people to operate street stalls and contribute towards the economy. It means that the economic situation is really tough, and the unemployment situation is terrible. In places like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, many people can't find jobs, and they have to downgrade their spending. It is at this time that China has relaxed its control, and the street stalls are allowed to relieve the unemployment pressure and solve the problems of people's livelihood. Move number four is to buy lottery tickets. Recently, lottery stations have appeared in many cities. They are stylishly decorated. Their business is booming with crowds of young people. Some hope that the lottery will bring them good luck because their lives aren't going well, while others hope for a miracle and a jackpot because they can't find a job. According to data released by China's Ministry of Finance, China sold 50.326 billion yuan, or roughly U.S. 7.1 billion, in lottery tickets in April 2023, a 62 percent increase year over year. In the first quarter of 2023, cumulative lottery ticket sales nationwide reached U.S. 24.6 billion, up 49.3 percent year over year. China's lottery sales are seeing an unprecedented boom. A woman who used to work at a lottery station in Wuhan Square, Hebei Province, told overseas media on June 12, 2023, that many media outlets are now reporting that young people won big prizes by buying lottery tickets, and as a result, more people are buying lottery tickets. There are even queues to buy them. The way to buy lottery tickets has also changed, as they are now bought by booklet. One booklet costs US seventy dollars. 
Another young man from the capital city of Henan province told overseas Chinese media on June 9, 2023, that he wasn't able to find a job after graduating from college in 2022. He did food delivery and tried a street stall, neither of which made him any money. Doing something else would require major investment. Buying lottery tickets only needs a small investment. If it wins, not only can he get his money back, he can also invest in doing something else. He said, but if you don't win, you won't have money to buy more lottery tickets, but you still have to find a way to survive. People born in 1990s believe in fate more than those born in 60s and 70s. You can see that the people who seek fortune-telling in temples are all young people, and those who buy lottery tickets are also young people. Now the happiest people in China are the retired ones, with a stable salary, dancing the square every day. Now the most painful is actually the young generation. They lack two basic things. One is a long-term intimate relationship. The second is stable and upward job mobility. Young people want to get the fortunes read, while at the same time, they want to get rich by winning the lottery. Because if they get rich, they can at least stop working.